once again to Pan Reading Freya. In this video, we are going to be talking about pendulums and tips. Okay, how to use them and um, what to buy. The first thing I will advise everyone to do is to think about what would you like. Maybe you can go on eBay, you can go on Amazon, you can go to a store or you can go, you can research also, okay, about what do you, what do you feel attracted to and what would you like to purchase, okay? Uh, on Google, you're going to find a lot of information and as well YouTube, uh, you will find a lot of information about crystals, pendulums, and what are they used for. Uh, for example, I have uh, this picture here. I'm not sure. I hope it's clear, okay? You can see um, these are necklaces, okay? And you, you can give you more or less an idea about what kind of crystals are there and then go from there. What kind of crystals are there? What you feel attracted to? And then purchase what you feel attracted to, okay? Um, you can buy a rose quartz uh, pendulum, or you can buy clear quartz pendulums, or you can buy um, copper pendulums. Let me show you this one. You can make your own pendulum. Like for example, for this one, I purchased the bottom, and then I added to my pendulum the top okay you can uh, be creative uh, you can um, decorate your pendulum how you feel it will work best for you and uh, you can add or take off whatever you don't like you can buy a wood pendulum You can buy something you like, like this, and then you can add on the top whatever you feel um, that you will like. Okay, also you can make a pendulum with a ring. Okay, any ring, any necklace. Okay, so the next step after you purchase a pendulum, it will be um to get familiar with your pendulum okay like for example you can just begin by holding your pendulum looking at it and just maybe carry it on your purse or just hold it you know just so you feel your pendulum the next it will be to begin asking your quest asking questions but first the first step will be asking your pendulum Actually, I have also named my pendulums. Like for example, the name of this pendulum is Tikiribu. And of course, uh, because uh, when I purchased this, I'm like, hey, I'm gonna receive Woody. And it just came up to me, okay, to call uh, the wood pendulums Woody. So you can name your pendulum if you feel like, like naming them or, um, putting them also in a special place. I will show you something, okay? Okay, so you had gone through the process of uh, researching about crystals and what would you like to purchase um, according to what you feel. No, I feel like rose quartz will help me more or clear quartz or I want something different like tiger's eye or, you know, amethyst or anything like that, okay? You can research about that. And then once you you feel more confident or once you have the information you think you need, um, just go ahead and purchase. Actually, you don't have to do research if you don't want to. You can just go look and the one you feel attracted to, just buy it. Okay, once you receive your pendulum, the next step after you have hold it and all those things, uh, it will be to ask your pendulum to please show you yes and no. For example, uh, Tikiribu, please uh, show me yes.
Okay, my pendulum is moving already. I hope that you can see it up and down. And for Tikiri Boo and me, always up and down has mean yes. Okay. So next you will ask uh, your pendulum. Tikiri Boo, please show me no. My pendulum is going into a circle, and I am familiar also with that. For tikiri boo and me, going into a circle means no. Okay, the next thing you can do is do exercises. Like for example, um, you can post something online or on Facebook to practice with your pendulum. And this will help you um, to get familiar and get, and get comfortable with your pendulum. Also, at the same time, it will give you immediate feedback on how accurate is your pendulum or if it's not being accurate, okay? Uh, you can start asking questions like, um, questions you already know the answer, okay? To see what your pendulum will ask you. Uh, tikiri boo, am I 25 years old? Yes or no? Tikiri boo, am I 25 years old? Yes or no? Here comes the answer. It's starting to move in a circle. So that means no, I am not 25 years old. And I know that is being accurate because I am not 25 years old. Okay, so you can ask another question. Um, tickety boo. Did I go to school this morning? It's already showing me a no. Of course, of course, I didn't go to school this morning. Um, tikiri boo, is my hair long? You can already see it's moving up and down. Okay, to avoid any further confusions for the future, what you can do is. Um, Design if you use notebooks for your notes or whatever, you can design one paper and you can put the name of the pendulum. This is tikiri boo. Yes is up and down. Up and down. No is a circle. Okay? You can make your notes and make a knee and anything you come across with your pendulum, you can always write it down. Because if uh, you use it and then you don't use it, then you will forget, okay, what was yes or what was no. In this way, you will have your book um, for reference to go back to, okay? So you can do that. Write it down. Write it down and always keep that in mind, okay? So now, the next thing uh, that you can do once you know yes or no, you can begin practicing more actively with your pendulum. Um, hold it daily, ask questions daily, uh, begin to get familiar. Like for example, once you more advanced, you pendulum, at times will say yes or no, and you will know those indications like when it's a maybe, it moves up and down and then goes in a circle, or it just goes the opposite way of no, okay? As you get familiar with your pendulum, you will begin to know when your pendulum is trying to tell you something else. Okay, the next thing that is fun to do and that I uh, usually do is, um, look, here is a chart, okay? You can find this on, online, okay? Uh, you can say uh, pendulum intuition, pendulum uh, charts or exercises. Um, let me see, what did I Google for this? Yes, maybe, should I or shouldn't I? Okay, just, um, you can search up pendulum, pendulum charts and, and different things will come up. Okay, like this one. This one has numbers on the outside. This one has uh, letters on the inside. 
right here. And also has um, the grease and, you know, different things like add, number, and stuff like that. Okay, you will have fun with this uh, kind of chart. I use this chart, like for example, when someone says, can you please tell me the first letter of the name of the man that I will marry? Okay, let's make up a character. Let's uh, pretend that um, Cynthia is asking me what is the first letter of the name of the man that she will marry. So let's go ahead. Green, please tell me what is the first letter of the name of the man that Cynthia will marry. What is the first letter, the first letter of his name? And it's, it quickly started moving, okay? So to me, it's the letter N. So I would say that uh, Cynthia is first husband or the person that she is going to marry with will start with the letter N, okay? Now, let's do another question. Let's say, for example, somebody asks, um, Stephen wants to know uh, at what age will he get married, okay? You grab Woody or any other pendulum you want to Sometimes I just have my pendulums, and before I ask, I just feel like, okay, which one will help? And I just grab it, okay? Um, okay. Woody, can you please tell me at what age will Stephen get married? And to me, it's appearing. Okay, okay. It's, it's stopping. Woody, at what age? <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Woody, at what age will Stephen get married? Always wait for the answer from the pendulum. See, it's starting to go again where it was pretty much going. So right now, it's telling me that around age 35, as you get familiar with your pendulum and as you practice more, then you will um, then you will know better and get more um. <coughs> get more, um, what is it called? More intuitive also with your answers, okay? So, excuse me. Okay, so that is one exercise, a chart that has uh, numbers and letters, okay? So you can use that. Okay, now, let's use um, this one, Woody. What I like to do with this one is to ask about, you know what, I printed a little bigger one. So let's use the little bigger one, okay? This one is um, with the chakras, okay? It has the color and the main, the main um, description for that chakra, okay? So let's see what this one will say. What I like to do is put the chart then put the picture of the person that I'm reading for right under it, okay? Like, for example, right there, okay? Something like that. And then wood pendulums are very good for telling you about uh, what chakras is a person experiencing uh, blockage and what they need to work on, okay? So let's see. Let's make out another name. Feel better if I do it like this. Okay, uh, Woody, this uh, question is for Maria. Please allow me to see. Show me, show me. What uh, chakra is Maria experiencing blockage at the moment? What chakra is Maria experiencing blockage at the moment? Okay, 
is definitely going to the crown or over herself, okay? So here we have the crown chakra and it describes generally fairly spiritual, has a, a, a oh, I didn't bring my eyeglasses, maybe this is more clear, yes. Has a puny innocence, has innocence, abundance of energy. When doing something is enjoyable, higher self, clarity. For deep depression, good for personality, blackish, brings clarity and reduces stress, okay? So for example, if we got the crown chakra for Mary, we can tell her that um, maybe she is too stressed out, maybe she needs to meditate, Maybe she needs to believe a little more on herself and she needs to have something uplifting or do something uplifting for herself in order to have more clarity, okay? So the point of using these charts is that a short description is already given and you can go with that and say something to the person that will make sense, okay? So we have the age, we have calculated age, we have calculated names or letters or times or around things like that that you can do with the first um, chart. And with this one, we can do something fun for finding out uh, what uh, chakras is the person experiencing blockages, okay? So now this one is another uh, fun pendulum exercise that I like to do. This, this one says, discover your life color, okay? With this one, what I like to do is just have fun also, you know? We're gonna ask um, for Cynthia again. Uh, Tikiribu, please show me what is Cynthia's life color for the month of October. Okay, and I quickly went into yellow. I wish you could see a little more. Okay, I should have put it more in the frame. Okay, and it quickly went to yellow. So this one also has a short description, yellow. Uh, maybe Cynthia should be careful with her stomach, liver, and adrenaline, adrenaline in the digestive uh, system, okay? Maybe she should not eat out, or be careful with what she's eating. If she's eating too much spicy food, maybe she should Tone it down on the month of October. Okay, less on. Okay, um, maybe she can overanalyze a person that she comes in contact with, uh, believe a little more in herself, and go after her ideas and desires, okay? The gift for the month of October is going to be, she is going to be smart, witty, and intelligent about life situations. Also, she needs to pay attention to gut instincts, okay? Whatever you feel like saying, it's going to be good to say it at the moment. Use your intuition, use what you feel, and also, as well, have fun with your pendulums, okay? So that is one way how to use your pendulums. Also, you can use a ring pendulum. This is a very old method of predicting what a person that is pregnant is going to have. You can either um, hold, have a, a ring, a necklace, or a hair of the person you are reading for, okay? You can put any ring, grab one of the hairs of the person you are reading for, and hang the ring um, like I'm doing it right now. What you are going to do is uh, you can go over their hand, once you go over their hand and every finger, come back, hold the ring on top of their hand, and you can ask, please uh, show me first uh, gender of firstborn. Okay, so there is saying uh, firstborn of the person you are reading for is going to be a girl. Up and down is a girl circle is a boy. This is another one of those things that you have to write it down in order for, for you not to forget or get mixed up 
at the time of doing a reading. Also, what you can do on a pregnant woman, if you want to have, um, if you want to know the gender of the baby that she is expecting, you can hold it on top of her belly. And if it moves forward, it's going to be a girl. And if it moves in a circle, it's going to be a boy. Okay, so that is another fun way to predict a gender. Okay, so that is another one. Okay, so I think the final one that I would like to mention is like, for example, when someone asks you, um, will I get married by the before the end of this year or this year? Will I get married this year? And for example, you, Pendulum, is telling you, no, you are not going to get married uh, this year. Okay, at times, um, some people don't like to hear just no. And when it comes to answering or giving more information about why, why you pendulum is telling, is giving an answer of yes or no, um, you can also use your tarot cards. Uh, for example, let's pretend that um, for um, uh, Mary, again, <laughs> Mary, Mary is not going to get married this year. You pendulum just told you, okay? But you feel like, um, you know what? I don't feel comfortable with, with just telling Mary, you know what? No, you are not going to get married this year. To get more information, what we do is ask the cards, okay? You can also just hold one card. Please allow me to see what is important to know for Mary. What will help her? Why is she not going to get married this year? Okay, you ask your question, you cut the deck, pull one card, and you see what you get, okay? So here we have the seven of swords in the reverse position, okay? So we can say that uh, Mary is not going to get um, married this year, uh, maybe because she hasn't healed something that has just happened in the near past, this can be a past experience, or she doesn't have the clarity that she needs. Even though she feels like she's ready, maybe she is not because there are certain acts of someone else or in herself uh, that she needs to pay attention to. Maybe she's not being honest with herself or she is not clear about what does she really want, okay? You can say something like that. Or, for example, a yes and an and a answer that you like, um, oh, well, it's kind of tricky, okay? As anything tricky. Like, for example, um, am I going to feel better by the end of the year? Uh, let's say it's a health question, okay? And, and your... And your pendulum gave you an uh, answer that is yes. Like, for example, you know what? Uh, is this uh, illness going to return to me? I'm going to return? Am I going to be suffering from the same illness that I'm suffering now in the future? And let's say your pendulum said yes, okay? Okay, let's see. Okay, we ask again. Um, please allow me to see what is important to know. Name of the person. Uh, for um, Cynthia, why is she going to be uh, suffering from the same illness in the future? Okay, why did I receive a guess? What is important to know about that? Okay, we cut the deck and okay, the ace of uh, source in the reverse position. Okay, maybe this is an indication that Cynthia is not um, being careful about. Uh, about a, a reality, okay? Maybe um, it's not that it's going to come back in the future. Maybe she's just feeling better for a certain period of time. It's advisable in this case, maybe to not stop treatment, to continue to be careful and to not ignore uh, when she feels sick, okay? That is why I'm saying sometimes it is important to bring more clarity into a question because sometimes it's not nice just to say yes for something that the person is expecting to that you will say no, okay? And it's not nice to say no when the person is expecting you to say um, a yes. In this way, 
when you say the yes or when you say the no, you bring more information and at the same time, you help the person, okay? So I think that I had mentioned everything that, is about, um, that I will advise everyone when it comes to using pendulums, okay? So let's recap. First thing will be to find a pendulum you feel attracted to, something you feel comfortable holding and using. Next, it will be to get familiar with your pendulum. Ask a lot of questions. Ask questions you already know the answer. You already know the answer that is a yes or you already know the answer that is a no. The other way you can um, get help in getting familiar with your pendulum is posting something and asking all the members of the group to please ask questions they already know the answer for. In this way, you will be practicing with a lot of different people and you will get more familiar <coughs> with your pendulum. Have fun with your pendulum. Ask about the color life of the month. Ask about um, blockage in chakras. Ask about names, age, and um, anything else that you uh, that you can come in mind, I mean, that you could have in mind to have fun with, use it. If you have used your pendulum in a different way or <clears throat> um, you invented something, please share it with us. Share it, share it with all of us. I'm always interested about learning new things, okay? Okay, okay. I'm ju I just, like, okay, I forgot something. Um, and with my pendulums, I don't really cleanse them or do anything special with them. Um, to reset them, okay? Um, the only thing I do sometimes uh, is a feeling, I guess, that I will have uh, when I'm asking my pendulums questions, and sometimes they just go yes, no, and it's kind of like all over the place. I think we saw it in the video when this I asked this pendulum a question. It kind of went like that, and it wasn't moving in any direction, okay? It's like... Um, something was going on. What I, what I do in those cases is I just take my pendulum and put it on the, on the window where I know the sunlight is going to hit it or at times, sometimes I just do it at night time. I just put it on the window sill where I know the moon is going to be shining on it, okay? And that is all I do. I don't really cleanse them or do anything fancy or special. I also have purchased this, okay, and I stand my pendulums on this. And I also, I like to have them at hand because at times a person will ask something, you know, and I'm like, oh, I feel like using this pendulum or that pendulum. And um, it's nice to have them on the desk ready to be used. So I hope this uh, video helps you. I hope it brings you tips, tips, ideas, and I guess the last thing will also be to please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, if you have used your pendulums on something, please leave it in the comments. I'm really, truly interested in knowing and finding new ways to use uh, your pendulums. I was also, um, like, I would also like to say that if you are having you consulting something, someone, <laughs> I'm sorry, you consulting uh, someone face to face and you kind of sense like this person, I'm, I know this person um, has blockages on something, but I just can't put my finger on it, you know, maybe because the person is too emotional or this or that. You can also use your pendulum on the person and go through all the chakras to find out uh, what chakra that person is experiencing blockage. I would recommend everyone that when finding out what person, what a person has a uh, blockage on, uh, to use a wood pendulum because wood pendulums don't absorb negative energy. Okay, so that is all I have for now. Thank you everyone for allowing me. I wish you all a wonderful day. Bye. Thank you.